while I was taking some pictures on the Pixel 8 Pro, I started to question myself. How is it possible that a phone can take pictures this good? I mean, all the pictures that you're seeing right now are all shot on the Pixel 8 Pro using the primary lens in auto mode. That these are quite literally point and shoot images with no edits in post processing whatsoever. The Pixel 8 Pro's cameras are special. Google is one of the best software companies in the world. And this year with the Pixel 8 Pro, they're flexing their AI prowess to the rest of the world. Every year, the Pixel's photography continues to improve. And this year, it's no different. The sheer versatility of this phone's cameras and the AI features that are available to fix the shots that you don't like in post make this one of the most powerful cameras you can find in a smartphone. You see, I love shooting street photography, especially on a smartphone. Whenever I travel, I pick a smartphone to take with me, and I really test that smartphone's capabilities in various lighting conditions. The most recent being my trip to Portugal and Spain, I took the iPhone 13 mini with me, and I came away super impressed with that phone's capabilities. Next month, I'm headed to Mexico, and I really can't wait to push this phone's cameras to the limit. But for now, we're still stuck in Toronto, and you're looking at images shot on the Pixel 8 Pro with the 50 megapixel primary sensor with an f-stop of 1.7. The natural bokeh that comes from the Pixel 8 Pro is impressive. You get tons of dynamic range, the images are sharp and in focus, and the autofocus is fast. You can literally take shots of fast moving cars with virtually no shutter lag. Of course, only if you do time the click just perfectly. And the depth of field on some of these images is quite impressive. With the Pixel 8 Pro, this year it feels like a lot more work is being done post-processing than in the years past. The images that you see right now on the screen isn't what I saw with the Pixel's viewfinder. Google just keeps improving its software processing to a point where right now what I'm seeing on my phone is exactly what I'm seeing in real life. It doesn't matter if I'm using the ultra wide lens or the 5x lens. These are some solid pictures. But let's say for some odd reason you don't like the shots that you took. Well with the Pixel A Pro you can fix these images with the help of AI and the results are scary good. Take for example this picture I took of a random McDonald's. With the Google's new magic editor I can erase the back of this SUV. UV. The Pixel 8 Pro will actually fill in what's supposed to be there thanks to generative AI. Then with the help of the magic editor, I can change the sky to let's say golden hour and the results end up looking like this. Keep in mind, this is fairly easy to do and almost anyone can do this with just a click of a few buttons. Honestly, some mind blowing stuff. However, if you do zoom in and you start pixel peeping, then you'll see the flaws in the editing. But the crazy thing is magic editor is still in its infancy. It'll only get better from here on out with each and every update. It's kind of hard to fathom, but in just a few short years, Google has gone from having one of the worst video quality we've ever seen on a smartphone to having one of the best video qualities I've ever seen on an Android device with the Pixel 8 Pro. The improvement in the video department is tremendous. The stabilization is great as usual, but the colors and the attention to the detail and the highlights have more certainly improved. I can confidently say that this is the best video quality you're going to get from an Android smartphone to date. It's even better than the video quality I'm getting on my S23 Ultra. Now, the big question is, is the video quality on the Pixel 8 Pro better than what you're able to get on an iPhone? Definitely not. We still have a ways to go, but in December, Google will be updating the phone with a feature called Video Boost. This is supposed to tremendously improve the video quality to apparently iPhone 15 Pro Max levels. At least that's what Google says, but that still remains to be seen. This is actual footage that I would not mind using in my YouTube videos, and nobody out there watching this video would call this poor video quality. This year, there's no doubt about it. The Pixel 8 Pro has most certainly improved by a good amount, but there are are still some lingering questions about this phone that us pixel lovers want addressed. Like how's the cell reception? Does the phone overheat? How has the battery life improved? How's the performance with the new Tensor G3 chipset? And most of all, is this year's price hike worth it? I'll answer all of that and a lot more in this video. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and this is the Pixel 8 Pro. I've been using this phone as my daily driver for a good week now and I have a lot of thoughts. Of course, if you guys want to see more Pixel content, then make sure you guys do subscribe. This month is definitely going to be busy with Google content along with the comparison of this phone to the iPhone 15 Pro Max and of course the S23 Ultra. So stay tuned for all of that, it should be epic. Coming from the new titanium iPhone 15 Pro Max, I didn't expect to hold a better feeling phone this year. But the Pixel 8 Pro feels very nice in the hands. This familiar yet slightly tweaked design feels great in the hands. It's a lot lighter than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The metal rails and the satin back feel great to the touch. The placement of the volume markers and the power button make a lot of sense to me. And on the back, Google opted to merge all of their cameras together in this elongated circular design, which for the record, I think looks pretty good. 
Now, I did not expect the Pixel A Pro to have one of the best displays I've ever seen on a smartphone this year. This completely came from left field. The Pixel A Pro is rocking a 6.7 inch LTPO 1440p display with a max brightness of 2400 nits. I mean, how did Google even pull this off? I remember it like it was just yesterday when the Pixel 3 came out and everyone was absolutely trashing the display. But the display on the Pixel A Pro is incredible. It's vivid, it's bright, I would even go as far as saying it's it's comparable to the display found on my S23 Ultra. That's how good the screen is. Not to mention this is a completely flat display, which I love for practicality purposes. Don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of curved displays, but I just find them to be impractical at times. They are more of a flex of anything. I understand there was a lot of talk about the fingerprint reader. Some people were saying it's too small, others were saying the surface area of the scanner is too little, but to me it's perfectly fine. Yeah, it is an optical fingerprint scanner, not the most secure in the world, but for me it gets the job done. Sure, it's not the fastest fingerprint reader in the world, but at the same time it's not the slowest either. Now, regarding the cell reception, I understand a lot of you guys have experienced drop calls and whatnot with your previous Pixel devices in the past. With the Pixel 8 Pro, I haven't experienced any drop calls. The cell reception has been great. In fact, in certain regions where my iPhone 15 Pro Max struggles to get bars, my Pixel 8 Pro surprisingly is still able to pick up a good signal. So in my opinion, the poor cell reception is no longer an issue on the Pixel 8 Pro. Another thing that I've noticed is that the haptics on the Pixel 8 Pro are really good. I mean, Pixels already had great great haptics to begin with, but this year Google took it a step further. And I believe for the first time ever, the haptics found on the Pixel A Pro are better than that of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now that is a big statement to make, I get that. But in my opinion, for the first time ever, an Android phone has dethroned the iPhone in terms of haptic feedback. When you're swiping, typing, or gaming on this phone, the haptics feel tight, there's good feedback, the vibration motor is strong yet subtle. And you really notice that improvement when you're using the key keyboard for typing out long paragraphs. A great improvement to an already top tier feature on Pixel devices. One of the most useful features for me is the recorder app. This is useful for multiple scenarios. Let's say you're a student and you want to record your lecture. You open up the recorder app on your Pixel and you begin to record the lecture. I mean sure, any phone can do this. But what makes the Pixel the smartest phone in the world is that you can go back and search specific words, phrases, or sounds. You can even find the exact time that a word was spoken. The app will even transcribe your recording for you. How useful is that? Whenever I have a thought for a video, I pull out the recorder app and I start voicing out my thoughts. Sometimes I can really get into the groove and I can write out a 2000 word script by simply using my voice. Then later on, I can go back into the app and pull up my video ideas by simply searching for them. That is extremely useful for content creating. With such a bright display, you expect the battery life to suffer. But surprisingly, once adaptive battery kicked in and learned my user habits, my screen on time went from 6 hours a day to 8 hours a day. This is very good screen on time coming from a Pixel device. In fact, this has to be the best screen on times I've ever gotten on a Pixel device. The standby time now is also noticeably better. The other day, I left my Pixel A Pro in my car, and overnight, the battery only dropped by 2% in a span of 9 hours. And this is with 5G Plus turned on. That is on par with iPhone level standby time. Now we got to talk about the charging speeds. The Pixel A Pro charges at a speed of 30 watts, which to me is fast charging. But a lot of people seem to think it's too slow. While it may not be the fastest charging phone out there, I still think 30 watts is a fair medium. You don't want to ever charge your phone's battery too fast. Fast charging does deteriorate the battery longevity of your device. You want the battery health of your phone to be as strong as possible to get the best possible screen on times 1, 2, three years down the road. Fast charging at a speed of 30 watts was the right call. Regarding the thermals, I'm afraid this phone still runs warm on occasion. The first three days with this phone, I didn't experience any overheating whatsoever. The phone ran as cool as a cucumber, and I honestly thought Google had finally addressed all the overheating concerns. However, on the fourth and fifth day, I did notice my phone get really warm. I wasn't even running any apps on the phone, I just picked up my phone on lock day and I noticed that the back of the phone was really hot. Now this could be an anomaly, it could be a bug, and I've only experienced experienced this twice thus far. But I do feel like this is important to acknowledge because this has always been a concern with Pixel devices. And I'm afraid we may continue to see this being an issue on the Pixel 8 Pro. But that still remains to be seen so make sure you guys do subscribe. Nonetheless, I will say this. We haven't seen a smartphone manufacturer make a leap like this in quite a long time. The improvement from the Pixel 7 Pro to the Pixel 8 Pro is astonishing. Honestly, a night and day difference. From the improved video to the improved display,
display to the improved design, the Pixel brand has come a long way in such a short amount of time. This is now the longest supported phone that you can buy. Google promises 7 years of software and future updates. I personally don't know anyone who hangs onto their phone for more than 4 years, but it's nice to know that this phone will retain some sort of resale value and is also beneficial for the environment so a win-win all around. If you guys made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I would love to know who my true supporters are. But make sure you guys do drop a like on this video that will help me out a ton and don't forget to flex with your superior AI tech.